if you've watched my videos recently, you would know that I got a new smoker not that long ago, and I decided to really give it a workout for its first cook. So today I've got a USDA Choice brisket. I'm gonna season it up with my coffee cocoa rub. We're gonna get it out on the Hunsaker Vortex drum smoker, give it some great hickory smoke, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have some fantastic brisket to taste. So here is my brisket today. This is about a 15 pound USDA choice brisket. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of trimming right now. As I always mention, I'm not an expert brisket trimmer. If you wanna see guys who really know what they're doing with brisket, go over to James at Amum and Claimum Smokers or Joe at Smoke and Joe's Pit Barbecue. They trim a lot of briskets. They know how to do it absolutely right. I'll put links in the video description to their channels. Now I do an okay job, there's nothing wrong with it, but if you really wanna get down to the nitty gritty, they are really good at it. So I am just gonna start here, taking off some of these big hunks of fat on our meat side. and getting these large areas of silver skin here. Don't wanna to lose too much meat. If I end up with a little bit of fat here on this side, I'm not worried about it. This is not a competition brisket and I am not a competition cook. I am just going to trim this whole end off right here, this corner. I'm gonna square some of this off and get rid of some of these slight discoloration in the edges and you'll find that a lot of times on the brisket. So I just wanna take this off, there's a lot of fat here too. And pieces like this, you can freeze and use for trimmings if you're gonna be grinding up, you know, something that's a very lean piece of meat to make hamburgers, this is great fat to add to that. I have a bunch of frozen brisket trimmings in the freezer right now. Let's turn this over, get to our fat cap. Expose a little bit of meat here, but sometimes you don't have as thick a fat cap. Just a little bit on this side here. Got a little too aggressive there. Don't want to take too much off other places since I kind of massacred this part right here. It's all right. All right, it's not winning any beauty contests, but that'll do. Let's get some rub on this. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know I generally don't use binders unless I really need to. There are some dry spots on this, so I am going to use a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcester sauce. I'll just hit it from every angle. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. And the rub I'm using today is my coffee cocoa rub. I did a video on how to make this not that long ago. I'll put a link up here to that video and in the video description. It's a super easy rub to make and it is fantastic on beef. I've used it on beef ribs, on brisket before, everything, it's fantastic. I'm gonna get a good coating on this brisket. Love the smell of that coffee. Making your own rubs is fun. You can play around with them, try different flavors. Get it up here, get the side. Let's get our fat side that I semi-massacred. Get a little bit of Worcestershire on here. I will be smoking this fat side down. That's generally the way I like to do it, just personal preference. Now this is gonna be going on the smoker tomorrow. This is gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, covered loosely in plastic wrap. It's gonna absorb all these flavors. Edge, a good hit here. Back to our meat side. We're already getting a good sweat on it there, you can see. All right, that is looking good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this loosely with plastic wrap. It's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. Tomorrow, I'll see you out at the Hunsaker Vortex Drum Smoker.
All right, the Hunsaker Vortex Smoker's coming up to temp. We've got hickory wood on there today. Let's get our brisket on. My target temp for the Hunsaker Vortex Smoker today is 275 to 300 degrees. Once we get to 275, I will change the lower vent setting to the run setting off of the start setting. That's how the smoker works. I may play around a little bit with it after that to see if I can dial it down to 250 or so, but generally from what I understand, this runs really well, 275 to 300, very similarly to the pit barrel cooker. Target temp for the brisket today, tenderness. That's gonna be somewhere around 200 degrees. When we hit the stall, somewhere around 160, we'll be wrapping it in butcher paper. As you saw, I have a water slash drip pan on my lower rack. Add a little moisture in the chamber today. This is my first cook on the smoker, so I'm really not sure how it deals with moisture. Today is gonna be extremely humid. It's 9 a.m. right now and it's 78% humidity. We're gonna be over 100 degrees today with high humidity. I'm not running an ambient temperature probe because when I did the burn-in on this, it ran super stable for nine hours. So I'm fairly confident in the included thermometer what that temperature is gonna be. I'll be monitoring the internal temperature of the brisket with the Thermoworks Smoke X4. Just keeping an eye on it. When we get close to that 160, like I said, we'll be wrapping it. But for now, we're just gonna let this go. So I'll see you out here in a couple hours when we check this brisket. All right, our brisket's been going for two hours on the Hunsaker Vortex Smoker. I dialed in the temp. I was able to get it to dial in really steady at 250. So I went with 250. That's my preferred temp for this. So let's take a look and see how we're doing. Oh yeah. That coffee cocoa rub always gives such great color, even early in the cook, but we definitely need more time to develop a bark. There's a lot of moisture here, a lot of humidity today, as I mentioned. We're at about 123 internal right now, so we have probably another hour to two before we get close to the stall, and that's fine. I wanna let this bark develop more. So we're just gonna let this keep going. I'll bring you back when it's getting close to the stall. All right, we are at the four hour mark. The temperature of the smoker is holding right at around 260. Really stable now once I dialed that vent in. The internal temperature of the brisket's about 156 degrees right now. Let's take a look at it and see if we're ready to wrap. That is looking terrific. Still a good amount of moisture on the surface of the bark is starting to set. But you know, I'm gonna let this go for another hour. The temperature is still rising slowly. We're kind of getting to the stall, I believe, but another hour should give us a really good bark development on here. So I'm gonna close it up, let this keep smoking. See you back here in about an hour. All right, we've been going five hours. It's like 99 degrees, 58% humidity. It's a fun one out here. The internal temperature of the brisket's moved about two degrees in the last hour, so we're in the stall. Let's take a look and then let's wrap it up. Looking good. Better bark setting, a little bit of moisture pooling still. Not too bad, but I'm happy with this. Let's wrap it up. All right, let's get this back on. Let's get our temperature probe back in roughly the same spot if we can. That's pretty close, showing 157. So let's go ahead and close this up. Let this finish till we get to that 200 to 205 range when we'll test for tenderness. See you back here when we hit that temperature range. All right, the brisket just hit 198 internal and we've been going 11 hours. So I wanna give this a check, see how we are in tenderness or if we're gonna let it go a little further. And yeah, we're night filming. That is tender after you get through the paper. See, and if you can see that, that's showing 204 there in the point. Let's check the flat. 
can see that it's showing 207. It's actually pretty tender there. All right, I'm gonna let this go 15 minutes more, then I'm gonna pull it off, put it in a foil pan, wrap it in foil, and it's gonna go in my oven for probably two hours to rest. The oven's gonna be off, it's just for insulation. So the next time I see you, it'll be inside when we're cutting into this. All right, after an 11 hour cook and two hours of resting, here is the coffee cocoa rubbed brisket that I cooked up on the Hunsaker Smokers Vortex Smoker. As a reminder, I bought that smoker uh, a few weeks ago. I did a video on sort of the burn in, but this is the first cook I did in. I haven't cooked anything else on it. So a brisket is kind of diving right into that. And looking at this, the bark turned out terrific. Now, Hunsaker smokers, for a lot of people, are known for hot and fast cooking. They're cooking 350 and above. I really dialed it down. I wanted it in that lower range, and I was able to keep it right around 250, except for a couple spikes after you open up the lid and the oxygen pours in there. That's normal, and it settles back down once you get the lid closed again. So really, it was in that 250 to 260 range the entire cook, 11 hours. And for me, that's impressive that that charcoal basket lasted 11 hours. I think right at the end there, it was starting to dip down. I think I had a, probably another hour, hour and a half left in a 250 range, although it was really diving down. I would have had to up those vents and really let oxygen in there to keep that 250 temp. But really for 11 hours, I'm pretty happy with that. So a lot of times I've said I'll separate the flat from the point. I'm not going to do that here. I am just going to slice straight across. Let's see how we did. Let's see how we did here. Let's slide this back. Got a little bit of flat, little bit of point here. It's kind of on the edge of the point. Let's get under here. Just a little bit. Oh, that's looking good. Yes. That is looking nice and floppy here and nice and tender too. <laughs> it's pulling apart, which is what you want. Minimal smoke ring. We do have a smoke ring there, but it's not a stick burner. We're working with chunks, but that is nice and tender here. I'm liking that and juicy too. Let's take another look. Oh, again, there's part of that point. Oh, this just looks so good. And it is still very hot after two hours. Wow. I should have put an insulator in the gloves, but that is nice right there. Pull apart. All right, I'm going to cut up some more slices here because it is time to taste. All right, here are some pieces that I cut. I'll insert some footage right here of the cut brisket, how beautiful it looked. <laughs> I just had to put it away because, well, it's about 11 o'clock at night right now, and this is tasting going on. I've had dinner like five hours ago, but I've been waiting for this. So it's time to taste, let's dig in. Now I'm gonna try a piece of the flat first here. It's got a little bit of the point attached, but here we go. Mmm. That coffee cocoa rub marries so well with beef. There's just something about it. It really helps enhance the beef flavor. If you've never tried coffee in a rub, and this is a coffee cocoa rub, but the coffee part really enhances the beef. Mm. But now some of that nice juicy point. Here we go. Mm. I don't know that you can ask for any more than a good point, a good piece of point from a brisket. That to me is a quintessential beef flavor. You have the meat, you have the fat. It is just a great combination with a good rub, smoke, low and slow, get it tender and keep that juice. It's terrific. And now here's some of the point with that really good bark on it. Mm. I didn't make any burnt ends today, but honestly, I don't think I needed to. This point turned out exactly the way I wanted it. So that was my first cook on the Hunsaker Vortex Drum Smoker. And I've got to say, I'm very, very happy with its performance. Burning 11 hours on a basket of charcoal, a full basket of charcoal. It handled it, it kept a stable temp, and it turned out some awesome brisket. 